Hi everyone, my name is Frankie and I'm a STEM ambassador and I work as a graduate air quality consultant at a large environmental and construction firm called ACOM. Um, and today I'm going to be telling you a little bit about keeping the air clean as part of this talk today. Basically, I want to talk you through what my job title is because I think it's quite abstract. So uh, we're going to go through it bit by bit and then hopefully you'll get a better understanding of what I actually do. So let's start with air quality first of all. I don't know how much you guys know about air quality um, but basically what it is is it's how polluted the air is or what the quality of the air is like. So it's also like sort of measuring how much of pollutants are in it. So some pollutants that I personally look at um, include oxides of nitrogen, so um, NOx, NO2, you might have heard about these in the news, they've definitely become um, much bigger in the news the past couple of years. Um, so you probably have heard of them, but just in case you haven't. Uh, there's also something called ozone, which is sometimes used. Um, for my job, I generally look at nitrogen more than ozone, but it sort of depends. Um, sulfur dioxide is also an important pollutant too. Um, generally more look at it for like sort of industrial projects rather than uh, more like road schemes, or buildings or something else. Um, there's also particulate matter. Now, particulate matter has definitely got uh, more important in recent years um, because of its health impacts, because it's being researched slightly more and people are finding out more and more about it. So it's becoming more prominent that basically we look after making sure that the particulate matter level in the air stays low. So why is this important? It's because of the health impacts. So these are just a couple of the health impacts that you can get. Don't worry, this is from long term exposure. So don't worry about going out, uh, walking on the road and just being like, oh, my goodness, I'm going to get one of these um, diseases now. That's not how it works. It's about over a long time. Or it could be a case of um, if you're asthmatic, that you might get quite wheezy when you're out and um, if there's too many cars about or something. Basically, don't worry <laughs> is what I'm trying to say. Um, but it is important. And these, this is the reason why measuring air quality is so important to us these days. Right. So let's move on from air quality. Let's go for consultant. So what is a consultant? Um, basically, it's essentially where clients or people who are building a road or a building or et cetera, et cetera, come to me and ask me or consult me um, on my opinion for what I think would be the impact of air quality if they were built what they built. Um, I then have to do some modelling um, I might have to go to the location where it's being built to do some air quality monitoring to then inform that modelling. And then I basically put all of my results into a report and I give that to the client and then the client goes, OK, cool, um, make changes if they need to. If not, then they'll send it on to planning and then if planning approves it, it will get built. So what is a graduate? It's someone who's just left university. So this is my first job after leaving the University of Leeds where I studied environmental science. Um, and I've been in this job for less than two years. All about the talks today are all about sustainability. So how does air quality relate to sustain sustainability and why is sustainability an important part of my work? Well, it's important that we keep air quality good where it is and try to improve it where it isn't because of health reasons. Air affects everyone as we all have to breathe. So it's really important that we keep it clean or as clean as possible. You have to make sure that any development that does get built or is potentially getting built is sustainable for air quality in the long run because air quality is so important, basically. So we've got some questions from uh, you guys that have already been sent in. So the first one, well, the first two, because I've bunched them together, is how do you monitor air pollution and where do you work in towns or countryside? So throughout the country, there is something called the DEFRA ARN, which is basically the government's automatic and urban and rural network, which is how they monitor air quality. So there's lots of like little boxes and little automatic monitoring stations which monitor the air quality up and down the country. So this is a map of all of them. <laughs> so as you can see, there's absolute loads of them and they're all monitoring air quality. Um, these are both in towns and in cities, um, but also in like rural locations um, in the middle of nowhere. I mean, you've got some top of Scotland, so there's, there's just loads basically. There's loads and loads um, in different sort of locations. And I work in both, so I definitely work in um, more rural locations. Um, I also work in um, 
more roadside locations. So this is actually somewhere where I was on site fairly recently um, and it's actually in Hull. As you can see, there's just a road right there. So, and this is what um, one of those ARN boxes look like. Um, there are also some smaller ones. They come in some different shapes and sizes, but this is one of the ones that it looks like. There's also something called diffusion tube monitoring. So this is a diffusion tube. Um, and basically all you do is take one end off, put it up on a lamppost for about a month. And then I come along, take the lid back off, and send it off to the lab and then we get results back um so yeah there's lots of different types of monitoring that you can do um, and it's all really important so next question um if you find the new building will have a negative impact on air pollution what do you do so uh well first of all we find out if this negative impact is a significant change on air pollution um, and for this we refer to guidance to help make the decision so basically, if it's a significant change, uh, we report this back to whoever is building the new building and make potential recommendations such as downscaling uh, the building or reducing its impact on pollution by moving it further away um, from existing houses, etc. Um, next question. So which subjects did you study at school? So I studied uh, three separate sciences at GCSE with maths, two Englishes, geography, history, RS and an ICT diploma um, and at A levels I did maths, geography and chemistry and I also did physics up until year 12. Uh, they were just subjects that I enjoyed so I thought I was good at so I went for it. What's the favourite part of your job? Um, I would say the variety I get to do within my job because I get to go on site, I get to work in the office, um, I also get to work on a variety of projects within my job and I get to do both modelling and report writing. So I feel like I'm never just doing one thing, which I think is a really important part of a job. So um, microplastics in the air aren't as well studied and don't receive the same attention in the media as microplastics in the sea. Are they much of a problem and where do microplastics come from? So I thought this was a really good question. So they haven't actually been researched very much yet, but they are definitely an issue. So uh, they're not something I do as part of my job, but I'm going to try and answer it as best as I can. Um, so around the world, snow samples have been taken and microplastics have been found in them, um, which shows that they are going around the world and they are creating a problem. Um, and they're really high levels in some places, which is quite worrying. In December last year, actually, uh, the first ever study for microplastics was done in London. So it's been done around the world for microplastics in other cities, but the first one done in London ever has been done last year. Um, and basically they found that 92% um, of microplastics that they found were fibrous microplastics that come from the wear down of plastic textiles, including clothing, upholstery and carpets. So this is really interesting. So if you wear synthetic clothing, um, this is actually one of the main places where microplastics come from in the air. Um, other sources of microplastics come from plastic products, uh, including disposable plastic bags and polystyrene items. So have a think about that when you're next doing some shopping or anything. Think about these things and think about um, microplastics. Are there ways you can build things that actually improve air quality? So yes, definitely. Um, you can have electric charging points to reduce emissions from cars, but you, there's also design things you can do to improve indoor air quality where it's particularly bad for a road, such as windows not opening um, or having air conditioning events on the top of the building or near the top of the building, um, bringing cl cleaner air in from the top of the building because if you have it too close to the road, then you'll get the pollution from the road instead of up the top of the building. Um, there's also air purifications for indoor rooms as well. So you might have seen them. So they are being sold now just in the general market that you can use to improve air quality within your own home. Is air pollution in the UK getting better or worse? So yes, this is a really hard question to answer because generally in the UK, air pollution is getting better. So this is a graph that basically shows all pollutants having a nice downward trend throughout the years since 1970. However, there are some localised areas, particularly in towns and cities, which may not be getting any better. or they definitely might not be getting better to that extent. Um, the thing about air quality is a lot of pollution occurs in, in a localised area and affects the particular area where the most where it is produced. 
air pollution can travel vast distances across the entire world but um, where it's that like really severe is where it's actually produced. So it's a case of yes and no for air pollution getting better because in a big picture way yes it definitely is but in some localised areas it could be worse or staying sort of the same. Um, do plants improve air quality? Yes they do. So um, there's actually a study from NASA about good air quality plants to help improve the air quality inside your home, which is worth a check out if you're wanting to do that. And outdoors, plants are being used outdoors to disperse pollution. Um, you might have seen them being used as barriers along roads. Um, this is definitely a new thing that's coming in um, to separate people on pavements from the traffic to try and improve air quality. Um, there's also lots of other ways that plants can be used to improve air quality. What did I want to be when I was little? Okay, so when I was about nine or ten, I really wanted to be a meteorologist because I thought the weather was really cool and I just wanted to help predict it because it affects everyone. Um, but when I was looking at universities, um, I kept that in mind, but actually I wanted to do something a bit broader. So I ended up doing environmental science, um, but with a little bit of like a couple of meteorological modules in there. Uh, and actually, while I was at university, I realised that it's more, far more programming and a lot of really hard maths rather than actually doing any of the theory. So I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. So um, I did other sort of stuff at university and one of, that was actually where I learned about air quality. And I found that was really interesting. So that's why I ended up wanting to be a, an air quality consultant. That's all the questions I've got. So yeah, I just want to say thanks so much for watching um, and I'm proud to be a part of a STEM ambassadors, a large network of volunteers. Our commitment and support brings STEM subjects to life and it helps demonstrate the value of them in careers. You too can request a STEM ambassador, support your school and community group activities either face-to-face -face or online by visiting the STEM learning website. Thank you. Bye.